So we have the Flash movie finally hitting theaters next week. This is not a joke. It's not a drool. It's real. It's finally hitting screens across the world. And oh boy, it's been one hell of a journey with many downs, but with the final up, that being the movie actually coming out for us to watch. And yeah, that journey from the first ever thought of The Flash actually potentially being a movie to now is a long one. And in this video, that's what we're going to go over. All the different actors, the different writers, the different directors and storylines that were going to be used in various versions of this film that never got made. But throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comments section which version, you know, sounded the most interesting to you. And is it the one we actually are going to get next week or over the next week in theaters? Or is it one of the other ones that was cancelled? Let me know. Now, the first instance of a Flash movie potentially being materialized was actually all the way back in the 1980s. And this was with Jeff Loeb, who was hired by Warner Brothers to write a script for a Flash film. But yeah, nothing really came from it. And we wouldn't be revisiting the potential of a Flash film until about 20 years later. And this was in the year 2004, where David S. Goyer, who some might be familiar with as he was responsible for writing the Dark Knight trilogy alongside Christopher Nolan, as well as Men of Steel, and Batman v Superman on the DC side of things, and then Blade and Ghost Rider on the Marvel side. Now, after writing Batman Begins and the studio being pretty impressed by his work, Goyer was approached by Warner Brothers to continue working on the DC films. Goyer reportedly picked working on a Flash movie over a Green Lantern one and was set not only to write the script, but also to produce and potentially direct The Flash as well. Goyer's The Flash was first reported to be in the works in 2004, with Goyer openly speaking about the project by December of that year. According to Goyer, Flash was his favorite of the DC Comics properties. Goyer also pointed out how Flash's powers could open to rich cinematic and story ideas but no release date was discussed by him at this point. David Goyer reportedly concluded his The Flash script in 2006, but no real updates followed until 2007 when Goyer announced that he had actually left the project. In a post on his blog, David S. Goyer revealed that his Flash movie had been scrapped because he and Warner Brothers simply couldn't agree on what would make for a cool Flash film. He also suggested that the studio had other plans for the character, most likely referring to George Miller's Justice League Mortal. Goya's The Flash would have featured both Barry Allen and Wally West, with Barry dying at the beginning of the movie and Wally having to step up as The Flash. But right as David Goyer's The Flash was cancelled, development began on a Warner Brothers Justice League movie, with George Miller being brought in as a director in 2007. Justice League Mortal was supposed to be a standalone Justice League story with no connections to either Superman Returns or Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, both of which had released within the two years prior to uh, George Miller coming on as a director. George Miller's Justice League Mortal, which would have been based on Justice League Tower of Babel, was originally eyeing a 2009 or 2010 release date and would star Adam Brody as Barry Allen, aka The Flash from the OC fame, as well as Anton Yelchin as Wally West. Justice League Mortal would end up never being released with the rumored tax rebate issues being the cause of it not going ahead, with it actually being scrapped in pre-production. They were actually ready to film, all the suits were made, everything like that, and Warner Brothers went, we're not doing it. But Warner Brothers at that time actually already had plans for spin-offs, you know, before going ahead with Justice League Mortal. A Flash movie picking up from where Justice League Mortal would have left off would enter development with Sean Levy initially set to direct. Levy eventually exited the project to work on Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian, and thus David Dobkin was hired to helm. Dobkin confirmed that The Flash would be a Justice League Mortal spin-off, but following the cancellation of the George Miller movie, that version of The Flash was also scrapped. It's important to remember that Barry Allen would actually have died at the end of the Justice League Mortal film, meaning that the Flash spin-off would have most likely focused on Wally West following the immediate passing, or shall we say sacrifice, of Barry Allen. So it's somewhat similar to Goya's take, except that Barry Allen died at the end of Justice League rather than at the beginning of the Flash film. But this is where we step into the next era, and the starting point of this next era actually leads to the birth of the Arrowverse. It's crazy how all this connects. So before Greg Belanti and Mark Guggenheim created the CW's Arrowverse, the duo was originally set to produce a Flash movie. Belanti and Guggenheim's The Flash, which would have also seen Michael Green as a writer, traces back to 2010 when that same team was working on Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern. As Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy was approaching its end with Dark Knight Rises, Warner Brothers had very high hopes for Green Lantern. A movie that the studio, you know, somewhat expected to be DC's equivalent of Iron Man, and by equivalent, they meant that Green Lantern would hopefully kickstart a DC cinematic universe like Iron Man did for Marvel, of which The Flash would have been the next part of. With the rumor at the time being that, you know, Green Lantern would come out, hopefully be a success, and then The Flash would be the next film, and then the end credit scene for The Flash would have Green Lantern showing up 
and then hopefully the uni- you know the universe builds from there. Now, no director was ever announced for this version of the Flash, and the movie would have been you know reportedly inspired by Jeff Johns' most recent Flash comics. However, after Green Lantern's uh, disappointing reception at the box office and critically as well, the Flash and any other potential movies taking place in this universe were scrapped. And then we saw Man of Steel come along, and then that was placed in or just sort of slotted in, I guess, as the start of the DC uh, cinematic universe. And that, I guess stuff would just take shape from then, I guess, sort of. And a couple of years later from this, Greg Belanti and Mark Guggenheim would get to make Arrow. And then that would go on to them making The Flash for the CW with Grant Gustin as Barry Allen. Actors linked with the role of Barry Allen in this potential film that they were doing at the time included Bradley Cooper, who had previously auditioned for Green Lantern. Chris Pine was actually one of the front runners from memory. There was also people like Justin Timberlake, Ryan Gosling, and even Sam Worthington were also in the mix to play Barry Allen. Now, all the movies we have talked about previously were either standalone or just connected to other, you know, potential cinematic universes. But from this point forward, for the rest of the video, these are all DCEU connected projects, you know. So this was meant to be set in the same world as your Suicide Squad, your Wonder Woman, your Batman v Superman, all of that. So following Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, DC now had a shared universe, the DCEU. Therefore, all solo films would then have to fit into the sandbox that was actually at the time created by Zack Snyder's DC films, all of which would end up, you know, culminating in Justice League or falling off of Justice League, you know, playing off of it. Ezra Miller was cast as Barry Allen all the way back in 2014, followed by cameos in Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. And this is when we have the directors and the writers and all of them enter. So Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, or as most people would know them, Lord and Miller, who by then had worked on 21 Jump Street and the Lego movie, were tapped to write the Flash film set within this new DCEU, though it was not clear at the time whether the two would actually direct the film as well. But before a decision on whether they would, you know, they would direct the movie or not, they actually left the project to instead direct Solo, a Star Wars story, which, funnily enough, they would actually be later be kicked off of and fired from. But then they would go on to write and produce the two Spider-Verse films. You know, the second one has just come out. Later, Seth Graham Smith was hired to direct The Flash based on Lord and Miller's treatment, and the movie was expected to be released a few months after Justice League. However, Seth Graham Smith exited the movie in 2016 over creative differences. Yes, The Flash was meant to be the first DC film after Justice League. It was meant to be Flash and then Aquaman, but yeah, it's been five years since Aquaman, so yeah, been a bit of a been a bit of a change. After Seth Graham Smith's departure, Rick Famuyiwa was picked to direct the DCEU's The Flash. Not much is really known about Famuyiwa's, you know, story for The Flash, but the filmmaker was also working on a new version of the script, but appeared to be, you know, still based off of Lord of Miller's treatment, but just sort of revision to how he wanted to tackle the project. It has sort of been stated that the film would have been a bit more, I guess, grounded and resonated more with younger viewers, but nothing concrete has really come out about what was going to happen in this film. The only thing that was sort of cemented is that Cyborg was meant to be a co-star alongside The Flash. It was almost like a bit of a buddy comedy sort of action sort of film. Rick Famuyiwa was even present at the DCEU San Diego Comic-Con 2016 directors panel along with Zack Snyder, Ben Affleck, Patty Jenkins and James Wan. But less than four months after this, the director also exited the project over creative differences. And this is where we move into the final ever cancelled version of the Flash movie before we arrive at the version that will be finally hitting theatres this year or within the next week from those videos coming out. John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, who had written Spider-Man Homecoming, were hired to replace Rick Famuyiwa as the Flash's directors. Once again, the Flash's production saw creative differences, this time reportedly between the directors and the star, Ezra Miller. The creative differences were such that Ezra Miller brought in comic book writer Grant Morrison to write a new version of the script while Daly and Goldstein were still officially part of the project, this version that Miller and Morrison wrote being heavily inspired by Back to the Future. Warner Brothers were not fans of the Miller and Morrison version, but John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein eventually exited The Flash shortly after this, with Andy Muschietti then landing as the director after his two IT films performed well for Warner Brothers, and Christina Hodgson was tabbed to write what is now the current version of The Flash's script, though Daly and Goldstein are set to have a story credit alongside it as well. And that is where we arrive to now, where The Flash movie is about to come out, with Ezra Miller as the star, Michael Keaton in there, Sasha Kaya as Supergirl, Girl, multiversal time travel, pretty much everything that Warner Brothers sort of wanted. They wanted some time travel. They wanted some multiverse stuff. Well, it seems to be all in this film. So it's been a long hell of a ride, but we're finally here. From 2004 to 2023, almost 20 years to get to this live action Flash film. It's been a while. 
and it would be sort of weird if it took us this long and then we don't maybe don't get another one for quite a while because of all the stuff that, stuff that's been happening behind the scenes but that's a waiting to see but thanks for watching guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did be awesome you can drop a like and it shows support let me know in the comment section down below which of these versions of the film would you have wanted to see is the one we're actually getting you know in the next week or so or would you wanted Belanti and Guggenheim's film would you have wanted David S. Coy's would you want have Lord and Miller imagine a Lord and Miller flash movie after seeing the two Spider-Verse films probably would have been incredibly crazy let me know in the comment section down below which one you would have wanted and uh yeah if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later goodbye